This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash agingwheels to get 10% off your first purchase. Hi! Christmas is coming up. Well, it is for me at the time of this recording anyway. And that means road trips. Road trips to faraway lands like Kansas to visit family. Road trips hauling myself, my wife, a child, three dogs, and all of our stuff. This is our Volvo C30. And that's a bunch of sawdust. Ignore that. This is our fun car, but it's also our family road trip car. Yes, it's a bit of a tight fit with all the aforementioned dogs and people in it, but we make it work. For a while now, this car has needed a timing belt and a CV shaft. No big deal, standard maintenance things. We were going to replace the timing belt in preparation for our several upcoming holiday road trips. But on the day we had set aside to replace the timing belt, I got in the car and the clutch pedal went straight to the floor. Yes, I understand that's what normally happens when you press on the clutch pedal, but this time it didn't push back at all. So suddenly our timing belt and CV shaft job now included a clutch slave and or master cylinder. And since the car has such high mileage, we might as well, while we're in there, also replace the clutch. In other words, a minor overhaul. That's a lot of work to do in the short amount of time I had. I wasn't totally confident I could get all that work done in time for a trip to Kansas. But more importantly, I didn't want to. But what were we going to do? We still needed a car to get places in. Wait, don't you have an F-150? No, I don't want to hear it. That's too logical and boring. No, obviously the only real option was to buy another car. We didn't need anything special. We just needed a car to keep temporarily that was reliable, cheap, fuel efficient, and spacious enough for two adults, a child, and a small zoo. The car I was looking at was this. It's a 1991 Corolla all-track wagon in excellent shape for just $3,100. It's reliable, practical, spacious, and it's pretty interesting. When was the last time you saw an all-track wagon? But we didn't get that. Instead, we got this. <laughs> It's just too bad it's constantly breaking. This is a 2005 Mercedes E500 4Matic wagon. It has a 300 horsepower 5 liter V8, straight piped exhaust, and it's a wagon which is a combination of things I like very much. We bought it for $7,000 from a friend of ours that's a used car dealer and we bought it with a transmission issue. What would happen is if you decided to romp on it, once you were done romping on it, the transmission would decide to not be anymore and it wouldn't go back into gear until you slowed down to about 20 miles an hour or so, which was annoying. Our dealer friend not only knew about the issue, he bought a new conductor plate for the transmission to fix the issue. So we, very logically I might add, Bought the car that night, drove home with the new conductor plate to swap it out ourselves. My wife and I were up until about 2 o'clock in the morning to swap out the conductor plate. Not like it was a hard job, in fact it was quite easy, but we got quite a late start. Then after we swapped out the conductor plate, I took it for a test drive and nothing changed. It was still broken. Because the one tool we were missing for this job was the transmission dipstick. So to figure out how much fluid to put back in it, we measured all the fluid that came out, which would work brilliantly if it didn't start out a quart low to begin with. When we finally did get a hold of a transmission dipstick, we found out the fluid was low, so we put about a quart into it, and then the transmission was fixed. How did a transmission that was showing no signs of leaking whatsoever magically lose a quart of oil to begin with? I have no idea, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Then after we got the transmission fixed, it was smooth sailing. He said, lying. The next day, while running some errands, we came out of the store to a flat tire. Not a big deal, flats happen. So I took the spare tire out of the boot, swapped it out for the flat one, and then we took the car to the nearest tire shop to get the flat patched, where they said, I'm sorry, sir, but the gash in your tire is more than an inch wide, so we can't patch it. Looks like you're gonna have to get a new tire, but it'd be better if you got two. Okay, how much is it gonna cost and how long will it take? We don't have any in stock, but I can order a pair and have them in by Monday. Well, that's no good. I'm leaving for Kansas in a couple hours. Do you have any better options? No. Hi. Hi. Do you have any 265-35-18s? No. Okay, bye then. Hi, do you have 265-35-18s in stock? No, that's kind of an odd size, but I do have 245-40-18s in stock. Will that work? Great, that's the same size tire that's on the front wheels. You have an all-wheel drive car. Why do you have different size tires on the front and back? The previous owner was a cheapskate. All four tires are a different brand. Oh, well, I could have the 245s installed on the rear and then you'd have matching sizes front and back. Does that sound good? Yeah, how long will it take? A couple hours. Great! So I waited around in the tire shop for the new tires to be installed and then immediately left for Kansas where, for real this time, the trip went off without a hitch. Oh no, someone's about to rear end me. <laughs> But then on the way back, 
yeah, that's when the fun thing happened. About halfway home, the power steering went out. Then the battery warning light came on, and then it overheated. Can you guess what happened? Yeah, it shredded the engine belt and left us stranded on the side of the interstate. Yay! On top of that, when this thing let go, it took out a coolant fitting, so coolant was spraying absolutely everywhere. Rather than immediately call a tow truck, we pondered the situation for a bit and decided to call the nearest O'Reilly Auto Parts to see if they had one of these belts in stock. And they did. And the nicest employee in the world not only delivered this belt out to us on the side of the interstate, he paid for it out of his own pocket. What a nice guy! Now, installing the new belt. I've got to give Mercedes some credit here for some great forethought. To install the belt, there's a spring-loaded tensioner in there that you have to pull back on. And to pull back on it, it's got a nut on the face of it, and you use a wrench to crank back on it. That nut is the same size as the lug bolts, so you can use the roadside service wrench that is in the back of the car to pull back on it and install the new belt. If it weren't for that fact and the shared nut size, I would not have been able to install the new belt on the side of the road. Once the belt was installed, we drove to that nearest O'Reilly, one, to pay back the world's nicest O'Reilly employee, but also to see if they had an upper radiator hose, which contains the fitting that was now broken. And they didn't have one in stock, so I had to bodge the fitting back together with epoxy putty and hope it would hold for the remaining four-hour drive home, which it did, and we got home just fine. Which brings me to now. That whole roadside belt shredding incident was yesterday. Today's a whole new day. We're at home now and I was able to go out and buy a proper upper radiator hose to properly fix the epoxy putty bodge job that I did on the radiator hose when we were out in the middle of nowhere. This hood release is beautiful. Unfortunately, while I could find an immediate replacement for this hose and this piece here, I couldn't find an immediate replacement for this hose. So I'm gonna have to dig this fitting out of the epoxy putty. There we go. Mm. <laughs> oh, I got it in my pants. Well, the hose end refused to come out of the fitting, so I just have to take the whole fitting out. Now I can separate the hose end out of this thing, because it's firmly stuck. New hose. Just pops right, there we go. I thought my next task was going to be to rewire the radiator fan because when I was stopped on the side of the road, I noticed some dangling wires underneath the radiator fan. It had stopped working and I assumed that when the belt went, it took the radiator fan wiring with it. But the wires that I saw dangling there were actually all of this. When the belt exploded, it wrapped itself around the radiator fan. So I just spent the last hour untangling this mess. Ready for a tiny little bombshell? This spot where I've been standing and filming? I'm stuck here. What happened is that upper radiator hose that you just saw me install, the bottom part of that hose is held in place by a little clip. A clip that I didn't get properly stuck in place. So when I pulled into this spot, the hose popped out and started dumping coolant all over the ground. I have since put that clip back in and it's in there properly this time, but now the car is very low on coolant. So I'm currently waiting for my wife to come and deliver me coolant so I can leave. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website development platform. Pick from, <laughs> choose your domain, and start your website based on many great templates to choose from. There's lots of great templates to choose from, and you can build your website and totally customize it and build it to your heart's content, all without ever writing a single line of code. So you don't have to be a developer to make a website. You need to stop flying up on, don't worry, the turkey is not being harmed maybe flustered a little bit. Just need to clip its wings so it stops flying under the roof of my shop. Maybe you want a website to show off your resume. Maybe you want a website to show, show off your portfolio. Maybe you're an artist, photographer, whatever it is, you can use Squarespace to make a website for you. You've got lots of feathers. No wonder you were flying so far. You can start your free trial today by going to squarespace.com slash aging wheels. Again, that's squarespace.com slash aging wheels and use that code aging wheels to get 10% off your first purchase. That's 10% 10 10 off your first purchase. Sorry, I'm being interrupted by a very annoying, oh, that's good, good bird, good turkey. You're gonna just leap up suddenly and scare the crap out of me, aren't you? Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. 
My workbench is covered with turkey poop and feathers now. Despite the constant barrage of issues we've had with this car after owning it for less than a week, we both absolutely love this thing. It's the nicest, biggest, most comfortable, and I'm a bit ashamed to admit this last one, fastest car either one of us have ever had. And it has a straight pipe exhaust, which sounds fun all the time. And we don't view it as unreliable either. That'd be silly. All the things that have happened to this car could have happened to any car. I mean, they didn't happen to any car. They happened to this one. A very short time span, but they could have happened to any car. The V8 and the loud exhaust, they're nice, they're fun, and if I'm honest, that's like 90% of the reason we got this car, but another benefit is this thing's size. It's huge! We used to have a Volvo XC90. This is bigger than that was, and it comes with a built-in dog net. Although, as you can see, I had to fortify the edges of this dog net because our smallest dog liked to climb through the gap. Even though she was too big, she would hurt herself because she's a big dummy. Cosmetic issues. This car has a fair amount of cosmetic issues around the body, and I don't care about them one bit, but I'm going to show them to you because they're funny. The paint's been touched up right here above the right tail light. You can see it doesn't look great. Not horrible, but not great. On this side, though, either the paint was brushed on or there's Bondo underneath this that was sanded with no higher than 30 grit. And it's rusting. The bottom edge of this bumper has some cracks in it, which are currently being held together by zip ties, which is fine. But whoever put the zip ties in the bumper was apparently not comfortable having zip ties holding together the bumper of the Mercedes Benz. So they tried to cover up the zip ties by bondoing and painting over them. It's creative. I'll give them that. This isn't the last you'll hear from this wonderful, monstrous hammer. I just wanted to share with you the story that it's given me so far. I'll come back in a few weeks with a follow-up after I've owned this thing for more than five days and give you a full tour of this wonderful giant wagon. Hopefully the rest of my ownership experience is less eventful than it has been so far. Although I doubt it, because the check engine light just came on. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.